Well, think of the atmospheric sound of chasing cars. That's a track from Snow Patrol's 2006 album, Eyes Open. The memorable song is instantly recognizable, especially since it received widespread attention after being featured in a season finale of the TV series Grey's Anatomy. And while that appearance may have helped speed the band to the top of the charts, Snow Patrol is definitely no overnight flash-in-the-pan story. It's been 15 years since the part Scottish, part Irish five-piece band formed at the University of Dundee in Scotland. Then their first breakthrough came in 2004 with the album Final Straw that included the single Run, which later became a hit for Leona Lewis. But it wasn't until 2006 that they became commercial giants. Chasing Cars was a double platinum selling digital single here in Canada that year and Eyes Open was the UK's best selling album. Now they continue to build on their momentum. Last year they put out their fifth studio album 100 Million Sons. And Snow Patrol is soon to release Up To Now, a 30-track collection of the band's best love songs, as well as a few new ones. Two of the band members are with me here today. Lead singer Gary Lightbody and guitarist Nathan Connolly join me live in Studio Q. Hello, sirs. Hello. Hello. Very nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for getting us. up and, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. making it in here. It's, it, it's interesting thinking about you guys, because especially for North American audiences, uh, people tend to think you're a relatively new band. Uh, that's a mm. new band that's suddenly done really well. And the idea of overnight sensations must seem somewhat comical to you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, it's, um, it's been a while, but um, I understand. I, I, don't, um, I don't ever get annoyed at people that say, the people, I mean, last night we were in Detroit and somebody says, you know, I love your second album, you know, meaning Eyes Open, right, with, right. You know, which is our fourth. Um, and uh, what's that song from your second album? That song that uh, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you know, and it's it, you know that sort of stuff doesn't doesn't bother me at all because you know we we are pretty secure in our you know we know our our place in the world. We're not um, um, we're not constantly trying to validate ourselves you know in, in the eyes of anybody because we know what we've been through. Um, and uh, the bottom line is that even in the darkest sort of times of playing to you know, 15 people and most of those in the support band um <laughs> it, it's uh, you know we still had a, a, a tremendous amount of fun we we're constantly laughing and um carrying on um, maybe not um so much this morning but uh, that's <laughs> probably <laughs> due to uh, was it a rough mostly. night no uh, the- just lo- rough uh, the bus was particularly um bumpy last night i don't know what was going on it felt as if we were going up the side of a mountain um <laughs> that's that's the mountain to get to toronto from the, detroit i yeah. don't know what was going on but there was something there was there, there was definitely an, a, a, a steep incline of some sort um at one stage of the night i think i might have been driving up the side of a building maybe. <laughs> but gary when you, when you say that you know your place in in the world what 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 do you consider your place in the world um well <laughs> that's a good question actually because I, I suppose i've said that now and i have to um, <laughs> <laughs> live by your words yeah. um yeah. well uh, in that i guess what i mean is um we're comfortable with uh, with uh, who we are because we were comfortable with who we were before we had any success we were 10 years in this band before before we had a hit um and nobody was expecting us to ever have a hit uh, by that stage um, so, um, anything that kind of happened after that point, um, after our first hit was kind of almost like bonus time. Um, but now we've kind of, um, become, I guess over the last five years, we've become sort of more comfortable with, um, having that success. So we sort of have two lives as a band. So we're, we're, co- we, we never get, we're, we're, we're never, um, we're always ready to be surprised, you know what I mean? Co- I constantly feel like we're waking up in a, in a, in a new dimension every day, um, especially oh. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, but, you know, because it's, uh, it's, it's just every day feels like um, there, there's some, something else happens in it. So we're, we're, we feel like we've, um, we've had some kind of elite training. I, I, <laughs> I keep wanting to go to Nathan, but then you say something provocative that I'm interested in. You, two lives, w- what would the two lives be? Um, the two lives be be this um, small little indie band that was um, you know uh, everybody's kind of secret almost, um, right. and uh, everybody. When I say everybody, I mean we probably knew all our fans by name. <laughs> um, and then and thank you, Stephen. Uh, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> uh, thanks, thanks to Tanya and um, <laughs> Billy, Billy Bob. Um, yeah, no, and and then this this other band that kind of. Um, the, the the that sort of took on the world by accident, right? Um, and uh, you know had a hit like Jason Cars that 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 
that we then followed like panting schoolboys <laughs> um, chasing an errant red setter um, across a field. You know, we never felt like we caught up with it. You know, it's, it's just it's just it went off and did its own thing. And we kind of uh, we kind of um, had our notes from. So, so, so chasing cars me. really is the the turning point. That's the one you. I mean, consider yeah. I mean, running in the, the UK was a big turning point for us because it made, put us into um, you know big, b big um, kind of big rooms to play in front of uh, a lot of people. But um, it didn't really affect the rest of the world. So. Do you like the success? I mean, it sounds like an odd question. I mean, who wouldn't, in a way? But I mean, is there part of you guys that feel like you, uh, you, you had cred when you knew the, the band member, band, uh, the fans by name, and and now you're a massive commercial <laughs> su success? No, I, we, I think we we've got much more comfortable at dealing with it, and um, yeah, I, we like it. I think it's because it it allows us to to, as Guy said, to play to more people and to to I guess get across our show or w w what we do live, you know, and um, and the more people that we can do that to, you know, the better. And, you know, it, as Gary said, the, in the early days it didn't matter, so we're, you know, it, it's, we're comfortable, so we can. Ooh, Nathan, why do you feel like this is the right time? It's always interesting. It's like writing an autobiography. When is the time? <clears throat> when is the time to write your memoirs? Is this the memoirs? right time? <laughs> well, is this the right time for a greatest hits record? Well, tell me why, why, that's, uh, why it felt like the right time. Um, Gary's point. Why are you pointing at him? Yeah, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's um, the whole idea of doing this this um, up to now a history of the band w w rather than a, a greatest hits. Um, it's um, well, also you know a greatest hits um, implies that there's um, hits <laughs> hit more than more than two. Um, right. But it's it's a collection of you know so our favorite songs. It's what we picked. It's a it's a history. Why was it band. the time to do the history? Uh, well, I I'll guess we're kind of sort of looking back over our, our career and and kind of drawing a line and saying this is what up to this point up to now mm. has been and um, that the next fifteen years and um, five albums um, that. We're going to kind of um, to use to use, <laughs> use a bono code to go dream it all up again. I guess you know is that the thing to 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 not re maybe reinvent, but to you know to to explore other avenues of m musically and hmm. you know and not be restricted by what I guess people think what what kind of music we make. You know, G Gary, you you joke now about. Uh uh, the fact that you knew your fans by name and there was 15 people in the club, but uh, take me back to the 1990s. I mean, I understand that you were once so broke. Don't make me go back there. <laughs> you were so broke that you had to sell off your record collection just to pay the rent. Is that true? Uh, yeah, but I mean, <clears throat> it wasn't just to pay the rent. I mean, I needed, I needed drinking money as well. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I, we, there were, as I said, you know, there were times when we, we had a tough, but that's, it's a rite of passage of every band, you know, sleeping in the back of the van and sleeping on floors and, Sleeping on the side of the road, right? Um, you know, it's, it's but sometimes it, it's the success of a band is its longevity. I mean, you guys, you stayed together from 1994 till 2004 when you had the first big hit, and then Chasing Cars is 2006. What kept you together? Um, a combination of brotherhood and belligerence. Um, hmm. You know, I mean, we we just we knew that there was something that, that we we're, I can I kind of guess, just made to to to, to do this. Um, we were extraordinarily durable. We'd have every, we'd have everything thrown at us, and to you know, in two thousand and two, before we signed to um, Polydor, to have given up then um, would have been a serious kind of defeat. You know, we, we just couldn't, we just couldn't bring ourselves. We needed to keep going. We were going to set up our own label at that stage and get jobs proper jobs real jobs real life um might have even had to wear a suit at some stage um <laughs> but uh i mean just to keep the band going and just to to, to finance the, you know the, the second stage and, and and it just was kind of almost at the the last minute before we we had to resort to that that polydor stepped in it was uh you know kind of fate um really the sun came in with nathan i understand Sorry, the sun. The sun began well, to sh well, shine see, on Nathan the group as soon as he band, joined. When Nathan joined the band, handsome as is, <laughs> as he's known. Um, uh, funny story, actually, we were in Cork, um, in the very south of Ireland, um, uh, doing a show a while back when he first joined the band, maybe after a few months. Yeah. And um, this guy, this kind of itinerant uh, <laughs> fella, 
um, <laughs> uh, it's already to, funny. Uh, came no, came yeah. up to him. He was kind of he had the he had the sort of the windswept uh, Irish Irish look. You know, the hair <laughs> up here and the the eyes sort of one off to the shops and one in the pub. Um, and uh, he looked. He just looked Nathan up and down. <laughs> looked him up and down. He just said, "Handsome," <laughs> and then just walked, walked off. <laughs> And everybody was just stopped <laughs> right. dead in their tracks for a minute, and uh, and then obviously we burst out laughing, and that became Nathan's um, Nathan's secret identity. <laughs> well, not very secret; it's clear for everyone to see. Right, um, right. This morning. But uh, but yeah, when he joined the band, it all changed. You know, you said you had a hot guy in the band. We had a, finally had a hot guy in the band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna say that. But, uh, don't 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 play Johnny Quinn this. <laughs> this. Uh, <laughs> The album that you put out, this your most recent record. I mean, before we get to up to now, um, is a, is an album called "A Hundred Million Sons," and um, you described the first single of this record, which is "Take Back the City," as a rallying cry. What are you rallying around? Um, to the new Belfast, to Belfast the way it is now. Um, you know, I grew up. Um, Nathan and I both grew up in a Belfast that was very different to to to, to peacetime Northern Ireland. Um, it's you know built around mistrust, division, fear, um, violence, sporadic violence as it was. It wasn't like a, a constant war zone like it might have been depicted in the news, but it was um, It was still um, explosive in, in many ways. Um, and uh, that all changed. Um, and now we we live, I still live in Belfast or close to it, and I, I live in a Belfast that is um, completely and utterly changed. It's uh, It's... Um, vital and vibrant and the music scene the art scene in general has now been allowed to flourish because people can walk the streets at night people can mm. uh, have a, a nightlife um you know uh, you know just per se and um uh, the music scene it's it's because the pick city is kind of a music a, 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 you know a kind of a, a clarion call to to the new music scene in belfast you know it, it um it's it's what I've. It's what's made me fall back in love deeply in love with the place. Nicely yeah. done. I understand you guys recently started a music publishing company, yeah. um, uh, by artists for artists. Tell me about that. Why? Well, we'll turn on your microphone first. There you go. Excellent. Okay. Do we? Ha can we turn on his microphone? Hello, Adam. Can we turn on his microphone? Is it on? There's, there you go. Is it on? Okay. Excellent. Um. Yeah, no, well, it's, you know, it was Johnny Quinn's idea, um, really, um, our drummer. And um, it's, you know, we just meet a lot of songwriters, as you would in 15 <laughs> years. Um, and uh, that that kind of are kind of are struggling or that kind of need a hand and, and need um, a better representation um, for their songs than they're getting. And it kind of um, a lot of people have been sort of messed over. Um, in, in that department in the past and we've uh, so we just thought that it, we would set up our own play we set up our own record label as well to put out um, Ian, Ian Archer's uh, last record and hopefully a few more um, but for the publishing we set up uh, uh, Polar Publishing which I think is going to become Bipolar um, <laughs> Bipolar Publishing um, as in BY Polar um, and um, and that, that's yeah. We've, our first signing was Johnny McDade, who's a f you know phenomenal. And how phenomenal and how will writer. you? What would you differ, do differently than a than a major publishing house? Um, well, I think there's. I guess there's um, one thing is just this sort of we're not going to hold people forever, you know, um, yeah. sort of short term, you know, and as you said, artist friendly, because um, right. we are, we know, um, and I think that, you know, that they're not going to be stuck to long term contracts and and get the best out of it, you know, and. Good rates, <laughs> and and you know they so they get the the, the uh, m most of the benefits and none of the kind of the the the, the holding over the hot coals of that we've had in the past. And so, if there's bands or artists listening across Canada, across North America right now, what do they do? They get they get in touch with you. Like yeah, the, um, you? well, we uh, I think it's all being set up at the minute, but um, there should be something to get to site or. On, yeah, your, our, on your ours. site, look on the on the Snow Patrol website, yeah. and we'll put up the the. Then we'll put a link to the site where you actually have to go to. But it'll <laughs> probably be a week or so before it, uh, it's all up and running. Okay. But, um, but okay. Uh, as I say, we've already signed our first artist, so uh, uh, it's 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 all legit. And do you feel <laughs> do you feel like you're you're in a place now to um, mentor 
uh, younger bands? I mean, you're not that old, but I mean, just to, do you feel like that's something that you want to do? Is that a give back? Is that something that uh, feels like a, an imperative for you? Yeah, I think we, we've been thinking about that for, for years, you know. We, we've, I mean, we're very kind of approachable anyway. I would, you know, I would imagine it's pretty easy for a band to just come up and, and, mm. and ask us questions anyway, because they do all the time. But, I mean, we set up a thing in, in, in Northern Ireland, Belfast, and, um, or we're part of the team behind setting it up, the OES yeah Centre, which is kind of a, a music centre with um, recording studio and and, uh, and rehearsal rooms and uh, venue and places where music related businesses can have an office and you know like a, a sort of a, a nexus for music in Belfast that there never was when I was I mean Nathan yeah, were sure. growing up there there wasn't anywhere so I mean we're kind of we're always kind of thinking of, of ways that we can kind of contribute because whatever however many times music kicked us in the ass you know it's given us it's also given us a life mm -hmm. uh, you know and uh, uh and we don't want people to have to go through the same things that we went through at the start you know if they could fast forward those 10 years that we had in any way by us giving them some advice then geez that would be well, a few minutes invaluable. ago you called it a rite of passage i thought musicians had to do that yeah no but i mean two years is a rite of passage <laughs> Right, ten years. Ten is years, a, you get a little a hungry. By far. <laughs> Nathan, what what would you say you've learned by being in Snow Patrol? I mean, <laughs> other than you're shockingly handsome, um, uh, what 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 uh, what have you learned in this in this uh, journey? Um, this is a really good question. Um, <laughs> you know, if there's a young band coming to you, I mean, what what is there something you would particularly impart to? Uh, them? I have learned a lot. It's um. Uh, it's not today. It's just uh, you, you've caught me on a on a, on a slow day. That's okay. Um, yeah. But um, you've learned that there'll be to, slow how, days. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, yeah, I've learned how to deal with slow days and do interviews with them. Um, <laughs> I can I guess kind of um, just general behaviour. You know how to how to conduct yourself as a band as as musicians with the other musicians and um, your bandmates, your brothers. You know, and and how important that has. Or you know, not become, but is, mm. and um, that you know, it's it, you know, it's rock and roll. It should be fun, and it is, um, it is fun with this band, um, but also you know, it's it's there's there's serious things to be done too. You know, and you take your music seriously, you know, and not yourselves, but um, mm. it's it's just you know, you got you got to. Live it. You got to believe it, and you got to be honest about it. And I think that's, you know, what what um, we're we're still learning. <laughs> Gary, what's the what's the greatest misconception about Snow Patrol? Um, that we're dull, probably. <laughs> yeah, if people only knew. But um, that that's kind of we like the misconceptions because they deflect from the from 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 our, our our personal lives. We're very private people, you know. Really, I mean, we're we're very sociable people, but we like to do that, um, you know, outside of red carpets and celebrity parties and things <coughs> like that. That um, people for a while invited us to, and then just stopped inviting us because we never we never RSVP'd. Um, so I mean, so you we, think people think that you're you're dull uh, as people or as uh, musically? I don't know, both probably. Um, but uh, I mean, I think people, uh, Chasing Cars did um, so well and was so ubiquitous that people have made up their a lot of people made up their own minds from one song right, right. and um, soft you know, pop. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if they listen to if they come and see us live, they'll be you know very surprised about how hard and heavy that we are uh, most of the time and I'd always have been a rock band even you know exactly um but uh you know it's i don't really does uh, it work in the inverse it's like the kids who come to just want to you know they're like i thought this was going to be a soft uh, rock rock show i thought i thought i was going to get ballads all night yeah yeah well i mean that's the thing you know it's it's it's, it's if they you know we're going to surprise an awful lot of people with the next single just say yes which is um which is very very different again um and i think 100 million sons itself was very different to, to eyes open but i mean just say yes is completely and utterly that's why we kind of we almost had the idea of, of putting a, yeah. uh, a um a history out now because if we're writing songs like just say yes which is sort of almost veering towards dance music it's it's like there is there are no limits and uh, to what we we can do what we can turn our hands to and and uh, you know so we need to draw a line, as Nathan says, 
under it now mm. so that we can look towards the future because if we don't then um people are just going to be completely and utterly confused um because we're not ever going to make the same music you know that we did before you know that's just the bottom line i asked you about mentoring younger bands uh you're you're also in the unique unique position to be taking advice from from your elders who you tour with i'm thinking of uh elbow but uh, and more specifically in, in particular you too who you've been uh spending some time with what have you learned by traveling with those guys um well we don't travel with them no, right, right. But, um, uh, we uh appearing with them I mean, they are every single thing that you need to know about um, performing, writing, being in a band, conducting yourself. It's all in you two. You, you don't need to look anywhere else if you want to see the exact perfect model for being in a band. The way they treat the support band, the way they are uh, with their crew, with their management, with the catering people, you know, with every person in that whole gigantic operation is treated with the same respect and, and love and, and, and treated like family. And when you join that tour, if you're not an asshole, um, you get treated with this exactly the same uh, respect as well. And it's, it's like, you, you know, we, we go in there and, and just basically have the time of our lives because it's like, it's, it's, it's sort of a utopia, really. They have built themselves into a situation where they Th their rules are kind of sacrosanct, you know. Y y it's just this is the way it is, mm. and if all if every band was like that, if every band treated other bands like that, then music would be a wonderful wow. place to live all the time. And I can't I can't speak higher, uh, uh, more highly of no, them. No, it's a very it's, it's a great uh, it's a great testament to them that you feel that strongly. Mm. And what about musically? Do musically, you, you learn from the music. Get, yeah, I mean, on stage, it's like uh, you must. I mean, you, uh, I'm thinking Irish kids. You must have grown up. Yeah, like you're sort of living a dream, right? You're touring with you too. Yeah, who you grew up, I would imagine, idolizing. Yeah, yeah. of course, uh, of course, you know. And and uh, when you see them on uh, on stage, I mean that, that did you, I learned so much in terms of like just being a front man. You know, you have to play to the back row. You have to make the stadium as small as you possibly can you know and bono's sort of watch word is is, is always kind of intimacy you know and anyway, if you can create if you can not create if you can um if you can if you can just find <laughs> intimacy in a, in a in a in a place as big as you know a, a sixty thousand seater mm, yeah. stadium then you know that is kind of the holy grail you know if you make they've really figured out how to do that as, as have Coldplay, yeah. it's it's amazing watching those guys. With so, you watching you too as well. This guy said, that, you know, there's there's a, there's there's four lessons going on on stage. You pick any member of that band and watch them at a gig. You know, um, you're, you know, you're just learning from every single one of them. You know, and it's um, it's just an incredible thing to see. It's mind blowing. And it, but it's it's you know it's without making you jealous. It it it's um, inspirational. Mm. You know, without going. Yeah. yeah, you can't. I mean, you can't. Literally, can't you be can't, jealous it's of just you incredible too. It's just, uh, you know, they're just uh, they 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 they've set they they have their own bracket where their music lives, and it's it's quite far above anyone else. <laughs> I know you guys are going to play for us live, and I'm uh, uh, happy that you've uh, chosen to do so. Let me just ask you: this forthcoming record, it's called Up to Now, which suggests that there's an an after now that's going to come. Where do you feel like you're at on the Snow Patrol journey, 15 years in? Um, I would say. If I'm making a prediction, I would say halfway through. Um, uh, music is changing, the way people get music, the way, um, uh, well, basically everything. Life is changing, of course. I mean, our, 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 whole, um, our whole world is, uh, is, is, is um, changing. infinitely, <laughs> infinitely different yeah. from what it was five years ago, yeah. you know, like, and, and music's no different, you know, in, in fact, music kind of almost uh, has, has, has sped away yeah. from everything out of control, you know, the record companies are um, in, in, in wild panic, you know, at the moment, because they, they, they nobody can put the reins on it. So, um, so we'll see what happens in the next few years, you know, but our, our, it's our intention, it's our every intention to keep 
um, making music but for But in it. the documentary, we're, we're at the half hour. We're, I think we, we, we're, we're at the we're half hour point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, what is it? The Coming up the, after the break. Behind the music. <laughs> Gary <laughs> tries to hang himself. Me- yeah. Light Buddy's meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, well, it's uh, a good pleasure to have you here. The, the record, uh, the current album is called uh, 100 Million Sons. The new uh, record up to now, uh, the retrospective, comes out on November 11th. It's got some new tunes included. What are you going to play for us? Um, well, uh, I guess we'll see when when you walk over there. Walk over I there. thought you were going to play "Crack the Shutters." We'll that's play "Crack the Shutters." Sure, we'll do All that. Right. You know, All right. Well, unless you want to play something else, let's let's do that. Okay. All right. All right. Snow Patrol in studio. Q Gary Lightbody, Nathan Connolly making their way over to their guitars and positions. Mm-hmm. 